Did you see that? Did you see where that punch landed? The announcers didn't, the broadcasters didn't, the commentators didn't. Hardly anybody saw that. That's not a concussion. That's a spinal cord contusion. Did you see his arms just suddenly drop? He was trying to lift him back up and he couldn't. Listen to what he says. My arms went numb and then I'm touching my fingers and I don't feel them. I don't feel my fingers. I don't have any feeling. I've never had any feeling. No. I don't believe them, no. I do not move. This is more dangerous than a concussion. This is a spinal cord contusion. And depending upon the severity of that spinal cord injury, this could cause complete paralysis. That punch landed to the side of the neck and forced his spinal cord right into the bones and then back over. It likely compressed the blood vessels around his spinal cord and blocked the motor signal and the motor function to his arms. It left him with an inability to feel his fingertips. So let's understand what a spinal cord contusion actually is. In order to do so, you need to understand that there are 31 paired nerves. These are the nerves that carry the signal, the motor function, from your brain down and out to the rest of your entire body. The spinal cord carries the sensations that we have from our body back in to the spinal cord and up to the brain for us to be able to register and know what's going on. The spinal cord is divided up into several different levels. And depending on where a level of injury occurs, there are specific symptoms or a loss of function that occurs at these levels. You have eight cervical paired nerves. You have 12 thoracic spinal nerves, five lumbar, five sacral, and one coccygeal nerve. So let's start at the bottom. Let's start low, go slow, and build up to the top to build your foundation of knowledge when it comes to the spinal cord. If you think of the coccygeal nerve as the region that's kind of most similar to your tailbone, that's gonna be the easiest way to understand it. And if you've ever fallen on your tailbone, you know how bad it can hurt. Well, if these nerves and the ones just above it get damaged, this can lead to an inability for you to move your hips or your legs. It can cause a loss of your bowel or bladder control or function and prevent you from having sex. If we go up even higher, and then we start affecting the sacral nerves or the five sacral nerves, not only will it affect the nerves underneath it, it will then include the things above it. And that will affect the hips and the legs like we talked about to a greater severity. Now you've probably heard a lot about people who have a herniated disc in their back or, or lumbar spine disease and their back's really hurting them. Well, if you actually have a spinal cord injury in your lumbar region, not only does it affect the things we just talked about at the level below it, but now this may prevent you from walking. In fact, an upper lumbar spinal cord injury can make it so you can't move your legs at all. And you may become a paraplegic. If we go up higher into the thoracic nerves, that includes all of the things below that level and it affects your abdominal muscles, your chest muscles, and your back. The muscles that help you maintain your posture and your uprightness, your ability to sit up straight, to walk up straight. So now let's get in to the cervical spinal cord, the place this punch landed. You have to remember that if you damage something up here, it blocks and affects everything underneath it. This punch landed right in the middle of this man's neck. It caused a spinal bruise. It's like a lightning bolt hitting your spinal cord. And it happened quick and it happened fast. There's different levels of nerves that exit your spinal cord in your neck. Those different levels control different functions. We think of being up very high, the C3, C4, C5 cervical level. 
And there's kind of a rhyme that we use in medicine to help us remember what it does. And that's that C3, 4, and 5 keep the diaphragm alive. If you have damage above this area or to those nerves, you can't breathe. Those nerves are what allow you to expand and contract your diaphragm. Those are the nerves that help you breathe. If you go lower down to C5 and C6, these are things like your biceps and your triceps extension. Those things get damaged and you become a tetraplegic or what we used to call a quadriplegic. It affects your arms. It makes it so you can't move your hands. It can stop your breathing plus everything else that's included below that level. Remember, a spinal contusion, depending on its severity, can lead to loss of muscle control and sensation. Your ability to have the signal then come back up. If it's blocked or punched here, the signal from the fingertips can't get past this area. That's why this man is looking at his fingertips. He's finally able to get the motor control back, but the sensory function still isn't there. Wait, why? If sensory nerves and motor nerves are both going down, why was he able to regain his motor control, but not his sensory function? The key to that comes down to the sensory and motor tracks. These are groups of neurons that are clumped together. Motor tracks that stick together, that run down the spine, more along the middle of the spine. Sensory tracks or groups of axons and nerves that run down the outside of the spine. You see, he got hit on the outside of the neck. He pushed that right into his sensory nerves first before the motor nerves were affected. And then it's a longer recovery for the sensory nerves to recover. That's exactly what happened in this fight and with this punch. But I've got to tell you, these are really nerve wracking and dangerous because it's not just motor neurons and axons like we've talked about before that run through here. There's an entire blood supply. You have arteries. You have your anterior spinal artery, one artery. That's it, just one that runs right down the front of the spinal cord. On the back side of it, you have a pair of paired posterior spinal arteries. These give off a branch, a radicular or a circumferential branch that goes around the spinal cord so that the inside of your spinal cord gets the blood flow that those axons and neurons need. And if you get hit too hard in the side of the neck, you can compress those blood vessels. That can end up leading to a spinal cord stroke or spinal cord ischemia. The damage to this kind of a blow can be life-altering, life-debilitating, and life-changing. We mostly see these with motor vehicle accidents, high-velocity collisions, but we are seeing them more and more and more frequently in sports-related injuries. This was a spinal cord contusion. I hope you're now able to know what you see and do everything that you can to protect yourself from this kind of an injury.